Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. It's been a little over a year and I thought it's about time we check in on Age of Empires Definitive Edition. It just had its 10th update and some exciting news that it will be coming to Steam after all. Which probably would have been better to do from the start, but here we are. That means people without Windows 10 or who refuse to use the Microsoft Store will at some point in the future be able to play it. Unfortunately, for those of us who bought it on the Windows Store already, it sounds like if you want it on Steam, you'll have to buy it again, but that there will be cross-play between all players, regardless of where you purchased it. Like I said though, it's had a lot of updates and is supposedly in much better shape, so I think it's worth a check-in. As someone who has liked but never really loved the original Age of Empires game, I thought they did a nice job making Definitive Edition feel less dated. Things like the idle villager button and walkable farms were especially nice to see. At the end of the day though, after playing a handful of games and making a few videos, I moved on and never really felt the need to go back and revisit it for fun on my own time. It still felt to me like a step back from Age of Empires 2. As an example of that, pathfinding was one of the biggest criticisms on release, and I can confirm that it's been improved a lot. Here I have the exact same test I ran when the game first came out, and the difference is immediately obvious. I still wouldn't say it's on the same level as Age of Empires 2 and its formations, but it's the best for Age of Empires 1 I've ever seen, hands down. Another one of the biggest concerns I originally had, which has finally been addressed in Update 10, was the lack of a rating system. They've listened to the fans and now have functional ELO ratings. This is important not just for people who want to play competitively and get a sense of accomplishment from reaching new ELO milestones, but even for casual players who don't really care about their rating, it helps a lot with making balanced games. One-sided steamrolls aren't really fun for anybody, and it might be one of the reasons the multiplayer never took off. For some people, it could be that this feature alone is enough reason to give it another shot. If multiplayer isn't your thing though, there have also been a lot of updates to the AI as well. Changes include the AI villagers now being able to better decide whether to attack or not, putting a higher priority on defending, and having new and supposedly better strategies. Personally, I find the hardest AI to be very competent, though it might be that I'm also just not very good at the game. Probably a bit of both. They've also patched the AI's economic management, which previously built way too many storage pits all over the map, and would sometimes not actually task a villager to build after laying foundations. That all being said, if you're expecting a smooth experience and human-like AI, it's not quite there yet, and there are still some bugs, especially around farming. In its current state, the AI tends to build a lot of farms, and leave half of them unused at any given time or cycles villagers between farms and other resources too often, which adds a lot of wasted walking time. At the end of the day though, I've seen nothing even close to how buggy it was on release, and even if it's not quite there yet and still makes some silly decisions, big strides are definitely being made. There have also been some updates to the user interface. For example, it now tells you how many villagers you have on each resource, and the number of idle villagers is clearly displayed. This is something I actually wish was incorporated into Age of Empires 2 now that I've experienced it. I know it's technically in the economic map overlay, but really, why not have it readily accessible? A lot of these changes came in patch 10, but if you're like me and haven't been following the previous patches, there are a few others added since release. Another good one is the option of an automatic farm reseed. It's a great feature and there's definitely a trade-off of whether you want to potentially burn through your wood faster than you expect and at inopportune moments, or if you want to keep complete manual control of reseeding. They've also included mixed queues of different units and techs. It took a few minutes to notice, but makes me realize how lacking this feature is in Age of Empires 2. Rather than jumping back and forth between your buildings after reaching a new age, you can just queue up all the techs you want. Likewise, there's also now a global queue option so that you can see all of the progress on all units and techs you're currently working on, and which ones are waiting. Most of these are things I'd now like to see implemented in Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition as well. The way I see it, if you want people to make the switch, you have to give them not just everything they already have and like, but also some things that after experiencing they won't want to play without. In fact, this update has done a lot to boost my optimism about the Definitive Edition project. I know some people might look at these patches as taking away resources from the other Definitive Editions, but honestly the worst thing Microsoft could do is just fire out these games as a buggy mess as fast as possible with no follow-up support. 
These kind of updates and these small innovations they're including give me confidence they realize that a commitment to happy customers and a quality product is good for business in the long run. Those are just my thoughts on the state of Age of Empires 1 Definitive Edition though. I'm of course coming from an Age of Empires 2 purist perspective, and I'd be curious to hear what some of you guys think of the AI changes and quality of life improvements. Is it too little too late, or better late than never? Let me know. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.